there are many different ways that you can draw attention to your launch by delivering value and yet not driving your followers crazy. <laughs> hey there, it's Ruthie from RuthieGray.mom and welcome to Instagram Insider Hacks. So easy, your mom can do it. This is the podcast that teaches you how to authentically deliver your message in a non-pushy way. If you want to receive engagement and investment on your Insta time, listen in. And now, here's your host, me, Ruthie Gray. Welcome to our interview episode this week with Misty Phillip. Misty Phillip is a podcaster, speaker, author, and entrepreneur who is passionate about helping you spark your soul message. She's the founder of the Spark Christian Podcast Conference, founder of the Rocket Podcast Community, and host of the By His Grace Podcast Show. Misty inspires through her leadership, speaking, and mastermind groups. She currently serves as the Houston Connect leader for Christian women in media. Misty is the author of The Struggle is Real, But So is God Bible Study and Spark Podcast Planner 2020. And welcome to the podcast, Misty. Thank you so much, Ruthie. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Yes. Oh, I am excited too, because I have learned a ton from you as a podcaster, and here I am, novice. So um, we are going to get into a few little tips on how to use Instagram for your podcast. But why don't you first tell us briefly how you got started podcasting? Yeah, so I finished homeschooling my kids and thought, what am I going to do with my life when I grow up? And I started speaking and blogging. Um, that turned into a uh, Bible study and another book that I wrote with some people and from the writing was really hard for me. And my family was like, mom, you can really talk. And my husband was like, why don't you podcast? Because you can talk a lot better than you can write. I mean, they weren't being mean. They were just like writing is a it's very labor intensive. And um, they said, you should do a podcast. So I finally, after a couple of years of, of moving my mic around my house, I got the courage. I got a download from God on what it was supposed to be. And I put it together and never looked back. Um, the only regret that I have is that I wished I would have started sooner because I absolutely love podcasting. And it shows. And so here's the difference between you and I. I'm a writer. It doesn't come fast to me, but I do way better at writing than I do words. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I admire people who can just speak well, speak eloquently. They don't say like and um all the time, you know, <laughs> or, you know. <laughs> so, um, now, Misty, how how long have you been podcasting then? Yeah, so I recorded my episodes, uh, my first initial episodes in a batch recording at the She Speaks conference in 2018. And then I came home and my son started football practice and I had no time with homeschooling to get it done. So we had to wait until Christmas break uh, that year to have time to get it all together. And so I launched on, on New Year's Day in 2019, so January 1. So I've been doing this for you know, a little over a year and a half. Yeah. And honestly, you wouldn't know that just because you just seem, I mean, you have, you're everywhere, Misty. We've got um, the Spark Conference that you founded and you've got your Rocket Podcast Community that is a membership community. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So let me just give a plug for the conference. You know, I saw the impact that my podcast was having all over the world. And, you know, part of being a Christian in the Great Commission is is being able to reach the ends of the earth with the gospel. And I thought, how cool would it be if I could get a bunch of people together to do that together because we're better together. And um, and 
in the process of putting that together, God put the Rocket Podcast community on my heart. And, you know, just like in his infinite wisdom, he knew two weeks after the first Spark conference that the coronavirus would hit the world and we would need to be virtual. And so he sort of went before me on on all of that. And it's just my passion to help people get the message that God has put inside of them out into the world because we need all of our voices right now. Um, every good voice, every positive voice, um, there's so much negative and difficult and bad in the world that I just want to encourage anybody who wants to to start a podcast and give them the tools that they need to do that with excellence. Yes. And your enthusiasm for the new and novice uh, <laughs> podcasters is um, just, it, it's catching. And I love how you encourage the newbies like me to get our message out, keep going and just start. That's how I view what I do on Instagram. So many people are just kind of frozen and they don't know whether they should post this or that, you know, a picture of themselves or a picture of their product, or uh, should they like do go live or should they do IGTV? And so they don't do anything. And my biggest advice is get started, right? You know, just do it. You don't have to know everything before you do it. And podcasting is the same, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think I was probably 20 episodes in before I caught my stride and really had an idea of what I was doing. And it's the same way for Instagram. You know, you start with your feed maybe, and then you, you know, start working with stories. And then from stories, you're like, well, if I can do stories, then I can do IGTV. And, and I think that's kind of what you teach too, is just like do one and, and just start doing it. That's exactly right. And so, Misty, you and I met, uh, we were in a group last year on Instagram. I I didn't really know you, and, and we started interacting, and I noticed your Instagram. And then all of a sudden, about six months later, I realized Misty is not running her Instagram like she did before. Something is different. Something has changed. It's popping. It's sparkling. She has gotten a fresh wind in her sails. What is it? So share with us. Um, first of all, before you share the pivot, tell me what was Instagram like for you before? Yeah. So, um, you know, Instagram for me before was was really a place to be connected with other uh, people like yourself and 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 just a place of connection. So I would go to Instagram and I would post, um, and sometimes I just had no idea, like what do I post? Like you you mentioned earlier, do I post my food? Do I post a picture of me? You know, um, it wasn't until I shifted to really. Um, think of it as a, a brand and and set it up as a business account and really started looking at things in that way that I started to shift and knew I needed help because I saw beautifully curated Instagram feeds and I thought I want that, but I can't do that just because for me, it was, you know, the book, the blog, the podcast, like everything came, the conference, it all came within a year, of, of, you know, which is a lot. And so I wanted to do well on Instagram. I just couldn't. And so I would really just post whatever I thought and then would go interact with my friends. Okay. So I would assume that it was just kind of at that point, like moving through mud. It just wasn't real easy then. It didn't come easy. Well, it's it. Well, yeah, it was more like it was just like, get it done really quick and move on to the next thing, get it done really quick and move on to the next thing. And so it wasn't like, like moving through mud so much as just like, I didn't have a lot of time to devote to it, to make it what I wanted it to be, but I knew that I needed to do something to make a shift with it. Right. So Misty is going to clue us in on what she did to make that shift. And it is something that we haven't really hit on yet 
in these podcast episodes. So why don't you share the pivot with us, Misty? Yeah. So I have a mastermind group that meets in my house and a new girl came to the mastermind and she had this amazing photography. She used to be a wedding photographer and she has an image branding consulting. It's called Be Bold Academy. And I was like, I knew instantly I needed to work with her. I just looked at her Instagram feed. It was incredible. She had, she was running several accounts and I was like, wow, everything pops. And one of the lessons that she taught me was you have to stand out on Instagram so that um, people stop scrolling because otherwise they're, they're, they're just scrolling through and you have to give them a reason to stop. And so she started taking incredible photographs for me. She's photographed me in my studio. She's photographed my podcast equipment. She's uh, pho- photographed my my conference. She We've done things in her studio. And so that I have a consistent look and feel with my photography, which I think is important because before I would go to Shutterstock or go somewhere to get a picture, but then that didn't match what I was doing with, with a professional picture that I had. And so it was really like discombobulated because there were different filters and, and I just didn't have time to learn all of those things. And so I went to a pro um, who, you know, had all that experience to help me out. So that is so interesting. Um, So I've, I've heard that it's a really good idea to get some professional photographs at least, but when she came and took those pictures at your home, how many do you, how many would you say she took? How many did you get? Yeah. So for that particular, um, that one, we only had a very short period of time. And so, um, and she did it as a favor. She did it for free for me. And so we probably only took about 25 uh, photos that time. But um, before I'd had another photographer where I had gone to her and Um, would bring a change of clothes or multiple changes of clothes. And, you know, we would shoot like 250 uh, in a, in a setting so that all of those pictures I could use in different ways. And so even like the cover of my Bible study um, and the back of my Bible study, that just came from one of my photo sessions. Um, So I'm really big on, you know, if you can get custom photography and then use it for your brand and then use it in different ways, um, whether it's, you know, in print or online and social media. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's one of those things that we have got to decide, are we going to invest in something like that or not? But I think that it really does make a difference because, like I said, I have noticed such a change. Your account does pop now. It is exciting. It's vibrant. There are many different um, shots and aspects of Misty now. And every time I see one, it just makes me happy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, we we need to give people a reason to stop scrolling and um, they want to see you know, us in our element and in our home. And I know you talk all about this um, with your with your Instagram hacks, but they they want to know if you like coffee or if you have a dog or all of those kind of things. That's exactly right. They do. So now you are using this to help ramp up your podcast and drive traffic to the podcast. Is that the main place that you use your account to drive traffic to? Yeah. So one of the reasons that I got help from this particular person was because like you said, I've got Missy Phillip, I've got Spark, I've got Rocket. I wanted to make that cohesive. And so I can use some of the same. So I have three Instagram accounts, right? I have my main one for Misty Phillip, but then I also have these other two. Um, And then I have one for my podcast. So trying to make that all work together. And so I can use the same photography on one and it reinforces the brand in another place. And so, um, so yeah, so I use it there. I also use it on my website. I'll also use it in other ways, but that was kind of the main reason why is because when you're, you're doing all these different things, um, how do you make that unified and make it make sense? Yes. And I'll tell you, I know how hard it is to run two accounts on Instagram, let alone three. 
And at one point in my Instagram life, I was running about eight accounts. So when you are running your own more than one account, it is important, I would think, to um, just try to cut time where you can and make the most of it, but make a cohesive look. So I like how you brought that out. That's a good point. Yeah. And then I use uh, CoSchedule to get it all scheduled for me, just so to make things easy for me, because in addition to those four accounts that I have, you know, I've got the Facebooks, the Twitters, the LinkedIn, the Pinterest, the all the things. And so when you compile all of that, it becomes a lot. And, and that really helps me visually see what I'm doing. And then I can go in and tag and, and do those things on, on the side, but at least it gives me um, a chance to like get it all done for the week so that I'm not, so that I can plan ahead and get the content prepared. And that's made a difference in my posting as well, because now I'm not just posting whatever I feel that day. I like have put some thought and intention to what's going on in my feed. That is so important. That's something I always um, teach my followers is that we have to have a plan and we need to sit down at least once a week to plan the next week. And I, everyone knows that I use later.com for mine, but co-schedule with CoSchedule, I'm guessing you can, it sounds like you can schedule a whole bunch more. With that software, because I don't use CoSchedule, can you tell me, does it give you a preview of what your feed will look like? Yes. And so basically what it looks like is it gives you a calendar view and then you can color code the different things with colors. And so I get like a content calendar and then each individual post, you can go in there and see exactly what it's going to look like on your feed. And, um, and with my package, I have 10 accounts that I can do that with, um, which I still need to up it because I have more than 10 accounts, but it's a good baseline for me um, to help keep me to keep me managed. <laughs> yeah, I love that you mentioned that because you are a busy, busy woman. You are everywhere. In fact, I think you had like three meetings before mine today. <laughs> and um, so I'm just really grateful that you uh, worked us in here. So you're using Instagram to drive traffic to your podcast and where else? Yeah. So also, um, you know, just to my website overall. So the mistyphilip.com has links to the other websites. So that's the other thing. I have three different websites. So Spark has its own website. Rocket has its own website. Um, and then at Misty Phillip, I've got books and blogs and podcasts. So I keep trying to drive traffic to that one main website, mistyphilip.com, because there are links to the other sites there. So the next sort of piece that I actually was working on today is, um, uh, an Instagram story graphic and some some for things from my feed that show Rocket and Spark and Missy Phillip and by His Grace, uh, so that you know that all of those are me um, because they're they're separate but the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. That's a lot to try to fit in, and then also fit in your personal things that you want to want to do. Also, my question is. How often do you post on each account every week? Yeah, so right now I'm posting at least once a day on each of the count of the accounts because I am prepping for an event. Um, for the Spark PodCon is going virtual with PodFest. And so at the same time, I'm opening up the Rocket community. So I probably will actually, right now I've got at least a post um, a day for everything, but I'll probably go to morning and evening um, and post different things in the morning and evening because I feel like, and, and maybe you can shed some light on this, but I feel like people come to Instagram for different things in the morning, maybe at noon and then maybe in the evening. Um, you know, I'm tired at the end of the day when I, when I go to Instagram. So, um, you know, I'm probably doing it a little bit different in the evening than I am during the day, but I'll probably go to three times a day just because I need to get as much exposure as I can on the conference. Right. And you're talking about while the conference is going on in uh, the weeks leading up to the conference. Okay. All right. So your launch and a launch is different. Because you do want to make sure that you are focused on something like that. And it's no time to mess around. 
I always tell my clients, this is no time to toot someone else's horn unless they're helping you to your own. <laughs> so that's not the time for you to share somebody else's, you know, scripture quote or whatever, unless they're in the pod fest, you know? So a launch is totally different. You want to draw attention to your product while also delivering value. So, and there are many ways to do that. You can draw a quote from someone that you know, something that they said during the conference or something that you know would be beneficial that you've heard them say before if you're featuring that person for the conference. And there are many different ways that you can draw attention to your launch by delivering value and yet not driving your followers crazy. (laughs) Right. You know, education, education, education. It's like the give, give, give jab. So if you're doing, if you're going to post every day or twice a day or three times a day, then if you're going to post three times a day, two of them need to be gives. And then the third time will be the jab or vice versa. So yeah, uh, you definitely have to have a different strategy during a launch for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're excited uh, for PodFest. Just can you shed a little bit of light on what that is and when it is? Yeah. So the PodFest Global Media Summit is running the week of August 10th through the 15th. And um, there are free tickets that for the live events that are going on Monday through Thursday. And my conference happens to be one of those uh, micro cons the, the spark event is on that one is on Tuesday, the 11th from two to 6 PM Eastern. And I'm super excited because I have people like, um, Mike McDonald from the Bible project. Did you know that the Bible project gets a million downloads of their podcast every month? That wow. is incredible incredible. And, you know, they've got over 2 million subscribers to their YouTube channel. So they're doing something right. And, uh, and I got a sneak peek behind the curtain and got to talk to, um, got to talk to him and, and the lead actor from the chosen Jonathan Rumi, I've got, he's talking about his vision for Christian media. And so it, it, I think it can benefit podcasters, but I think it can also um, help anybody who's speaking, writing, or working in social media, because I think there's going to be some crossover there. So I would um, urge your listeners to check it out. And especially if they can they can go for free, um, but there's also a paid option if they, they can't watch it during the time and they could come back and watch all the sessions. So we're trying to set a, a Guinness Book of World Records for the largest online podcast event. Wow. So when will this be available that people can sign up for PodFest? Yeah. So they can sign up now at podfestexpo.com. All right. And after PodFest is over, and maybe you're not allowed to say this, but will we be able to access that or is it just that's the end? Yeah. So for those live for the free, um, you know, it's it's like you have to show up. Um, but if you purchase a t- ticket, there will be some availability afterwards. Yes. OK. All right. OK. Wow. I'm excited for this already. So let's end with I love how Misty. So you're podcasting and you're podcasting about Jesus, but you're helping others to also get their message out that may not necessarily, it may not be about the Lord or scripture or God's word, but I feel like a lot of the people who follow you, Misty, like me, are believers who we want to get our word out. And this is a creative way to do it while still sharing that we are believers. Would you say that's one of your biggest goals? Absolutely. Um, You know, I believe that when you have Jesus in you, you can't help but spill it out everywhere. And so that's my goal is that if if somebody comes to my Instagram feed or they come to my podcast, that they will see the light of Jesus that is in me and um, and I can shine the light on the, the people that I bring on my show. And um, yeah, I think that it's just a net. It just comes out of us. We can't help it. <laughs> That's true. There's nothing like the joy of the Lord, is there? Yeah, no, there's not. Well, Misty, I 
just so appreciate you being here today. And where can people find you? Yeah. So Misty Phillip is my name. There's no S on it. A lot of people try to tack an S on so they can go to Instagram and find me at Misty Phillip and they can go to mistyphillip.com and then they can find links to all the other things. Okay. Well, be looking for PodFest. Um, look up Misty on Instagram and see her lovely face and her lovely photos because they'll inspire you to up your game on Instagram photos. All right. Thank you so much, Ruthie. All right. Thanks again, Misty. Bye-bye.